Hello and welcome to Django for Everybody. One of the things that I like to do at the beginning of each class is sort of say why. Why should you take this class? Why did I make this class? And in particular, why Django? There are some questions like, ooh, why not Flask? And I'll, I'll get to that. So I just want to take you back in time a little bit. Three years ago, I was a happy professor. I was teaching, we were teaching Python for our beginning users in our data mining, and then I thought it was really important to learn a second language. And so I taught PHP for our web dev. I like PHP, it teaches you like how the web really works. I taught SQL and I love that and taught about all the good stuff. And then we taught JavaScript, jQuery and JSON as well. And, uh, and I had been building that class literally for five years. I had been building the graders for it, the stuff. And, and, and one of my met metrics as a teacher is how far do my students get at the end of class? And so I look at 15 weeks, and what was the last assignment? And then that to me is the way I judge whether or not I've done well or not. And over the years, I try to get the students farther and farther and I, I, I adjust the first part of the class to be more efficient so that I can be more effective at the end. And so I can put more useful stuff because there's so much in the beginning classes that is just like, oh, the mechanics of it. And you gotta learn the mechanics and then you can apply those mechanics, but you just can't start off and say, here, cut and paste these 4,000 lines of code. It does you no good whatsoever. So three years ago, I had a very well-developed PHP class. And in, no, in not too many words, I was told that they didn't want me to teach PHP for web dev anymore because everybody wanted to do Python. And a lot of people were actually doing Flask in some of the more advanced classes, like our mobile application classes. So I was told to switch to Python, sort of told to switch to Flask. I, I've done Ruby on Rails. I've done PHP, which is pretty raw. I've done Cake PHP, which is a framework. Um, and I've done a lot of programming with and without frameworks. And um, I just, another teacher taught a class using Flask and I didn't like how that class turned out. I looked at the end of what they were doing at the very end and I thought, whoa, that's not very much stuff. But I started with an open mind. And so I actually had a whole year when I was teaching PHP for one whole year. They let me teach it for the last year. That's also when I developed web applications for everybody. And that's also become a MOOC as well, which I love and I think a lot of people use it. They use it. It's really a great MOOC. And I'm still convinced that learning more than one language is a good idea. So you might want to take web applications for everybody after you take Django for everybody. So I would go everywhere I would go. I would ask everyone that I would meet, do you use Flask or Django? I mean, luckily, five years earlier, there was like 25 choices in Python. But by three years ago, it really narrowed down to Flask and Django. There's other cool ones like Sanic that are specialized. But Flask and Django are kind of like the big ones that everybody, not web to pi there were so many of them that I'm like, oh man, which one am I gonna pick? And that's the problem with PHP frameworks is there's so many of them. Although Symfony and PHP is kind of winning. So I would ask people, Django or Flask? And people would give me very passionate responses. They would say, Django is the greatest thing ever and Flask is absolute trash. I would go on to the next person. They would say, oh, Django is trash and Flask is awesome. You know, 50% of the time they would love one thing and hate the other one. It's am it was amazing. I re really got no trend whatsoever. And so about halfway through that, I'm like, I'm getting no data. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting half the people love one thing and hate the other thing. And so I changed the question. I stopped asking whether it was Django or Flask because they were saying, what do you like? I was really asking, what do you like better? Not what should I teach? And so I said, look, I can only teach one, Django and Flask, and which would you teach first? And then which would you teach second? What order? And then universally, everybody just had to accept the fact that Django was way better, way, way better to teach in the, as the first class. Um, and so, and so I, I, I felt I got really strong data on that. So I picked Django. I wanted to use Django and in retrospect, it's brilliant, right? I, I've been working on this Django class for two, two and a half years now. And each semester I make it better. Each semester I improve the slides. And I do that thing where I try to like 
compress the beginning and get efficiently done with the beginning part so that I can do better stuff at the end. And I'm really pleased. And so what you're seeing in this Django for Everybody's uh, uh, MOOC is that uh, two years of careful engineering of the class. And I'm really proud. You can go to projects.djfree.com and see some of the things that the students have built. I'm amazed at how much they can actually build on their own. And literally, couldn't have done it with PHP, and couldn't have done it with Flask. Django is the only way that students would be able to produce complete functioning websites with a real user interface at the end of a 15 weeks. And so that means to, that to me made uh, Django a great success. And I'll close with, I just got done looking at the most recent um, Python community, programmer community survey. And um, I was surprised to see that the number one use that they had of Python was web applications. And the number two use that they had was data applications, which like floored me because I know that Python is great for data applications and it's just super dominant. Part of the reason that it worked out that way is it wasn't like web was twice as much. They, Python is used for so many things. And so, you know, they, there was a lot of things on the list and then web just edged out uh, data analysis by a little tiny bit. You can be critical of Python web development. And um, my answer is, if it's not perfect, it's going to be perfect because people like to write in Python and they don't want to write in Rust or Elixir or Scala. Those are harder to learn, and honestly, whatever the shortcoming of Python web development, um, it's gonna get fixed. So, welcome to Django for everybody. I really enjoyed, and I've been looking forward to the moment where this be was mature enough and well enough developed to become a MOOC, and so here we are. And I'm glad to make your acquaintance. Cheers. <laughs>